Howdy. In this video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about linear quadratic approximations as well as differentials. But let's first talk about linear and quadratic approximation. The general formula for a linear approximation is equal to f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a. And as for your quadratic approximation, this is going to be f of a plus f prime of a times x minus a plus f double prime of a times x minus a squared over 2. So notice with the quadratic approximation, you're just adding that third term. You're just adding that hence quadratic term. Now, they're either going to ask you to find the linear or quadratic approximation or use linear quadratic approximation. Regardless of the way they're asked, your formulas don't change. The only thing that changes is what you plug into a, into x, and f of x. Now, if they say find linear approximation, your a will be given to you, your x, just leave it as x, and your f of x will literally also be given. Why this x, you're going to leave it as a variable because your final answer is going to be a function, a function of x. So let's talk about how to find both linear and quadratic approximation. Notice with this question, it says find both linear and quadratic approximation for the cubed root of x at a equals 8. Okay. Well, what we're going to do, or what I like to do to begin with, is I like to write down the general formula. So L of x is equal to f of a, my a is 8, so it's going to be f of 8, plus f prime of 8 times x minus 8, okay? And let x just leave it as x. Now, notice that there's only two things you got to find. you got to find f of 8 and f prime of 8, because once you have those two numbers, you just plug it in. So, if f of x is equal to cube root of x, which is x to the one-third, then f of 8, which is 8 to the one-third, is 2. So this is going to be 2 plus, now let's find f prime of 8. Well, first I need the derivative. f prime is one-third x to the negative two-thirds. And so plugging in that 8, that's one-third times 8 to the negative two-thirds, which is going to be one-third times. If you're still uncomfortable with, like, say, eight to the negative two-thirds, I actually have several videos like this that um, in my pre-cal section. Definitely go check these out because these need to be relatively fluent. But eight to the two-thirds is four, but because it's a negative exponent, it'll be one-fourth. So it's going to be one-twelfth. And so plus one-twelfth times x minus eight. And that's it. It's nice, easy, painless, as long as you set it up like that, okay? So, just write out your general equation and recognize that all you got to do are find these two numbers. And so I like to do that off to the side, find those two numbers, and plug and chug. Now I said find both linear and quadratic approximation. And so Q of X, my quadratic approximation, is F of 8 plus F prime of 8 times X minus 8 plus, now you just add this extra term, which is going to be f double prime of 8 times x minus 8 squared over 2. Now, fortunately for us, we've already got this first part. This first part right here is just your linear approximation. So I already know that that's 2 plus 1 12 times x minus 8. And now the last thing we've got to do is find f double prime of 8. Okay, so we first need the second derivative. So the second derivative is going to be a negative 2 over 9 x to the negative 5 thirds. And now when I plug 8 into there, this is going to be negative 2 ninths times 8 to the negative 5 thirds, which 8 to the negative 5 thirds um, is going to be... Okay, well, let's talk about how to actually do it. Okay, so let me do this 8 to the negative 2 thirds for y'all, and then I'll do this 8 to the negative 5 thirds. That way we can go at it. But let's first figure out how to do 8 to the 2 thirds. So that way if you don't know... If you already know how to do it, if you already know that this is 1 over 32, then good job. But let's talk about this just in case. So I look at this bottom number, which is 3. And what I do is I take the cubed root of 8. The cubed root of 8 is 2. And I still have that numerator, and so now 2 squared is 4. That's it. 
That's literally it. So if you have 8 to the 5 thirds, once again, I look at this 3 and I take the cube root of 8. Cube root of 8 is 2. I still have that numerator and 2 to the 5th is 32. That's it. It really isn't that hard. Like that's, <laughs> that's as hard as it gets. Okay. Now, because these were negative exponents, because this right here, this 8 was to a negative 2 thirds, because it was a negative exponent, that's why I made it 1 fourth. And that's why over here, this 8 to the negative 5 thirds, first off, uh, this is going to be negative 2 over 9. I don't know where that 8 came from. Negative 2 over 9 times, and then 8 to negative 5 thirds is 1 over 32. Which, if you want to simplify this, it'll be a 16. 16 times 9, this is going to be 90 plus 54, which is 1 over 44. So negative 1 over 144 uh, times x minus 8 squared over 2. And if you want, you can make this negative 1 over 44 times this 2 right here. You can make this minus a 1 over 288 times x minus 8 squared. And that would be your quadratic approximation. Honestly, I think the hardest part of linear quadratic approximation will be as you get to your higher derivatives, the numbers are just uglier to work with. But as for our process, our process is really straightforward. So this is how you're going to find both linear and quadratic approximation. Now let's talk about utilizing, using linear um, approximation. If you need to start from scratch, A is going to be a quote-unquote easy number. Okay, and I'll talk about this in just a sec. X now, you're going to out actually output a number, not a function. X is your quote-unquote hard number. And f of x is what you get when you replace your hard number with an x. And so taking a look here, pretending that I'm starting this from scratch, use linear approximation to approximate the cube root of 9. It's a cube root of 9. I don't know, that's really hard. Ah, your x is equal to 9. A. A is a number very close to 9 that you can easily take the cube root of. And in this case, my A would be 8. You need to pick the number as, you, as close as you can to 9 that you can easily do whatever your function is. And here is the cube root, and I can easily take the cube root of 8. And so f of x f of x is equal to, uh, well, just replace your hard number 9 with, well, an x. So that's how you determine what a, x, and f of x is whenever using linear approximation from scratch. But fortunately for us, we're not doing this from scratch because we've already done the linear approximation for f of x equals cube root of x at a equals 8. We did that here earlier. And so your l of x if you do this correctly, it should once again be 2 plus 1 12 times x minus 8. And so the only difference now is you're actually going to plug a number into x. And that number into x that you're going to plug in is that hard number that you don't know mentally real quickly how to take the cube root of. And so you take this x and literally just plug it in. And so, therefore, the cube root of 9 will be approximately 2 plus... 1 12th times 9 minus 8, which is 2 plus 1 12th, which is going to be 25 over 12. Okay, so that's how you're going to find and use both linear and quadratic approximation. The last thing I want to mention, the last thing that comes from this section, is finding both dy and delta y. Let's do dy first. What I have is you want to find both dy, we'll say part A, do dy, part b do delta y. So I have y equals x squared plus 1 as x changes from 2 to 2.5. Well, if y is equal to x squared plus 1, the derivative of y, dy dx, is equal to 2x. So if you want to solve for dy, dy is just 2x dx. And a lot of times they just want you to leave it like this. But if they actually want you to plug in numbers, what this is going to be, this is going to be 2 times. Use your first number for x, which is 2. And as for your dx, dx is your change in x. That's 2.5 minus 2, which is 0 
which? So they want numbers. Here, 2 times 2 is 4, times 1 half is just 2. So that's how you're going to find dy. And if you want to find your delta y, delta y is going to be f of your original f of 2.5 minus f of 2. And so you're just going to plug 2.5 into the original minus plug 2 into the original. Now 2.5, I think for me, whenever you're squaring something like that, it's easier to square a fraction. And 2.5 as a fraction is 5 halves. And so f of 5 halves is 5 over 2 squared plus 1. All I'm doing is I'm plugging this into the original, which that's 25 over 4 plus 1, which is 29 over 4. So this will be 29 over 4 minus, and f of 2, f of 2 is what I get when I plug 2 into the original, 2 squared, that's 4, 4 plus 1 is 5, and 29 over 4 minus 5, this 5 can be written as 20 over 4, so it's going to be 9 over 4, which is just 2.25. And so that's the difference. For dy, you're going to take the derivative, multiply by dx. Delta y is going to be, uh, you're going to plug the, uh, it's going to be f of your like second number minus f of your first number. Cool? So that's the difference between dy, delta y. And as for your linear and quadratic approximation, just know your formulas and know your setups. Now here's the thing about problems like this. Let's pretend you didn't watch this video. Let's say I just brought this sheet into here and I'm like, hey, this is your final answer. And you're like, holy crap, what the hell? Just like, like there's no way. But... Stuff like this looks a lot harder than it actually is. Go through the process that we went through, and I promise it ain't going to be too bad.